Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. So I have a plant I've had for a very long time. I got two of them. And then I got a new baby one, which is maybe about waist height this year. So they're called Australian tree ferns. Huge showstoppers. These were on the uh, either side of my pool this year. And oh, they're just, they give you such a lush, lush look. They're not messy. They don't shed. There's no spikes, there's no thorns, they're not poisonous, they don't flower, so there's no bees, but they give you that island feel. This is an Australian tree fern. I love the fronds. These fronds, easily six feet, if not more long. And the whole trunk right here, you see right here? There's actually no wood inside that trunk. It's all root system. So they, just like any fern, love water. And this one loves fertilizer. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna prune this back. I'm gonna take everything back. I'm gonna leave a little bit of leaves, little fronds as you'll say, in the center. And um, I'll show you how I'm gonna overwinter it. This one really gets no pests, no diseases that I've ever seen. I've had this one for years. I, no deer, no anything, I've never had anything on it. Not a single bug. Actually, no, wait, I take that back. I had a mealy bug one time. I sprayed it once and it was gone, but it never did any damage. It was always on a couple fronds and I took them off. But really, generally, they have no pests and they have no diseases. So anybody could really have them inside the house when they're young, not when they're big. When they're big, you want to store them in the basement, you want to store them in the garage, just like the video I did with the bananas. You want to store them like that. You don't want them to freeze, but the cooler temperatures, they will do so much better. They will not really grow. So you don't have to worry about it getting big and uh, if you only have a small little spot. But the thing is, you can't let these guys dry out. They will need water. So I'll give them about a gallon of water a month. And you don't want it soggy. You just don't want it bone dry where the soil pulls away from the pot and goes inward. You want it just barely moist. And these guys will be fine. And usually the cooler temperatures where you have them stored in a basement, a garage, maybe even a cool bedroom, a gallon of water should suffice. But... It all depends. Everyone's a little different. Here in zone 7, my, we're really a zone 7A, but my yard is like a microclimate. The sun goes this way here from that side, and so it gets pummeled here. So I have no bad winds with the, with the fences here. I have all the sun. So it's actually warmer. These guys come out earlier. I usually bring these guys outside probably mid-April? because it's warm enough in, in my yard where our frosts are done and they can take that cooler temperature out here and be perfectly fine. I'll take my cart real quick and drag them into the garage if I have any problems, but generally they come at that size, that, uh, that date. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and show you guys how to prune these back and save them. And here's one, well, before I do that, I wanna give you one cool little tip. If these guys ever get too tall, they'll easily hit 40 feet. It'll take a couple of years, but they'll grow quick. These guys can grow easily two, three feet a year if they're given a bigger plant pot. I've kept mine kind of contained in this smaller pot. And with that, you kind of limit the growth. But if you give it like a whiskey barrel or you keep giving it a bigger pot, it will grow fast. If it outgrows your storage space, your house, really anywhere, all you gotta do is you can go, let's say this guy was too big. What you're gonna do is you can go ahead cut it in half right in the center here you can cut right through the trunk since it's primarily made of roots there's no hard wood like you would see on a regular tree so you can go ahead and cut all the leaves off the top or all the fronds and leave just the trunk and you can bury about this much of it generally what you see as much as your pointer finger you can go ahead and bury that and then water and it will actually all those roots in the trunk will actually send roots out and you'll have a whole new plant so it will never actually outgrow your spot because you can prune it right down. And the old trunk for what you cut off won't regrow a new fern. So that part will be dead. But the above part that you have saved, that you can go ahead and pot up and you'll be good. My friend Ben actually did the same thing with his. His actually snapped during a heavy storm. So I told him exactly what I just told you guys. And his rooted in within about two, maybe three weeks and was sending out new fronds. And then when these guys send out new things, they're called fiddleheads. You could actually, actually, I, you can't really see them right now, so I'll show you the fiddleheads after I prune some of these fronds off. So let's go ahead and prune this, because it's a little misty out right now. 
and I don't want to be out here forever because it's start, I'm starting to get a little wet here. You can kind of see it on the hair. That's not sweat, that's a mist in the air. So let's go ahead and start pruning these guys back. And what you'll also see is when you prune this back, it has fuzz. This hair, some people might have a slight uh, allergic reaction or you get like a slight uh, dermatitis rash. So if you, I have no problems with it. So if you're worried about it, just wear a pair of rubber gloves with it. And then that way it won't touch your, or even with long sleeves too, long sleeves and rubber gloves, that way it won't touch your skin and you'll be perfectly fine. But other than that, they're so beautiful and they're so big. You can see this was a one from last year that I actually left on. I always leave a, like one on, but eh, not always. Sometimes I'll take it off. It all depends. But this year, I'm really gonna just cut it back hardcore. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Actually, you guys see as you touch it, you can see all the fuzz and stuff that gets on the hands. So it's not that bad. I have no problems with it, but if you think you're going to, wear long sleeves, wear some gloves, you'll be fine. Just toss the clothes, your long sleeves, right in the wash, and even your pants too, as soon as you're done, and just throw away the gloves. That way, at least you'll make sure everything is not on you or going to spread or dropping throughout the house. But most of the time, people don't have an issue with it. It's just those couple of people that might so but all right so now i have this pruned back so this is what i leave i cut it back so every frond only has a couple yeah, let me show you i cut it back so only there's a couple just like this that that way it's easier to actually move throughout a doorway you, you could put it anywhere and it's not so wide and i don't know if you guys can see this let me show you here, let me take the tripod over here and i'll show you This is called a fiddlehead. This is what the new fronds look like when they start coming out. It's so cool. And then they'll unfurl and open up. And then, see I have another one right in here. And here I'll show you the other fiddlehead. Can you guys see it right there? It looks like the top of a violin almost. It's so cool. But now that it's pruned back to about this size, you should have no problem overwintering it inside, guys. Should be no problem. So it will be a little heavy. I have it in a thick terracotta pot. So you would definitely want a hand cart or something to move it. Don't break your back. Don't hurt yourself. It's not worth it. Just be careful with this. And then this guy, no fertilizer in the winter. You're not gonna feed it whatsoever. But remember, you do wanna keep it barely moist. It should have no pests, no problems inside. Just keep it barely moist. I give it about a gallon of water, about a month. And then that's really it. And then I'll bring it outside around mid-April, put it in a shaded location. Because remember, when you store plants, they're used to not having any light. So when you bring them outside, you don't want them burning. They'll get a sunburn just like how we can too. After a winter and having no light, being bundled up in like, like an igloo. Oh no, Eskimo, there we go. Um, you're gonna burn. So you wanna put all your plants in full shade and then slowly over the course of like two weeks, move them into more and more sun. And then once you do that, they'll be able to be in full sun and do perfectly fine. So, all right, well, I hope this was a lot of help for you guys. If you guys have any questions, please uh, send me a message, request a video, follow me on Gardening with Sean on 
Facebook and my new YouTube channel. So if you guys have anything, please let me help you with it. We'll garden together, we'll have a great yard. And I'll be doing a video soon for overwintering citrus. So stay tuned and we'll have a great garden together. All right guys, take care.